This is a real story. I can still feel the adrenaline coursing through my veins when I think about that night. I don't care if anyone believes me I lived through it. I know what happened, and I know what's still out there. It all started with the sound of my car sputtering, a sharp, mechanical cough, and then nothing. No warning lights, no gradual loss of power. The engine simply cut out like it was never running in the first place. I was on a desolate stretch of road, miles away from the nearest town. The kind of road where you're lucky to see another car pass by in an hour. Just a narrow two-lane strip cutting through dense, dark woods. I checked the time it was exactly 3 a.m. The witching hour, as they call it. That detail stands out now, but at the time I was more concerned with my car being dead in the middle of nowhere. My phone had no signal, of course. I wasn't surprised by that. I had passed through dead zones earlier on the drive, but this felt different. The silence outside my car was unnerving, too heavy. I tried the ignition again, but all I got was a weak click. Nothing. I tapped the dashboard in frustration, hoping for some miracle, but the car wasn't coming back to life. I was stranded. The night around me was suffocating. There were no sounds, no insects, no wind, no distant hum of cars. Just an eerie stillness that wrapped around everything. It was as if the world had gone silent. I sat there for a moment, debating my next move, when I heard it. A low, guttural growl, so deep it vibrated in my chest. It came from the woods, just beyond the tree line, almost too faint to hear. My heart skipped a beat. At first I thought it was an animal, maybe a wolf, or something else prowling the forest. But then the sound came again, closer this time, deeper, like it was right on top of me. Panic flared inside me. I locked the doors out of instinct, knowing it was useless. Whatever was out there sounded far more dangerous than any animal. The growl echoed again, sending a chill through my entire body. I could feel the air change, thickening with a strange, oppressive energy. Something was out there, watching, waiting. The feeling was unmistakable, primal, and my instinct screamed at me to run. I fumbled with the keys, turning the ignition again and again, hoping for some response from the dead engine. But it was no use. The car wouldn't start. The growl came again, and this time it was followed by movement. From the edge of the trees, a shadow emerged. At first it was hard to make out, blending with the darkness. But as it moved closer, I could see it was massive too large to be any animal I'd ever seen. Its eyes glowed, two burning orbs cutting through the blackness, locked on me. My breath hitched as the figure advanced, its body shifting and flickering like it wasn't fully part of this world. I yanked the door handle and bolted from the car, not bothering to grab anything. My only thought was to run, to put as much distance between me and whatever that thing was. My legs felt like lead, heavy with fear. I ran blindly into the woods, the sound of my footsteps crashing through the underbrush the only thing I could focus on. But behind me, I could hear it following, its massive steps pounding the earth. Every time I glanced back, the thing was closer, its form distorting as it moved, flickering between shapes, growing more monstrous with each step. It wasn't just chasing me, it was hunting me. My lungs burned as I pushed through the dense forest, branches tearing at my skin, the darkness making it impossible to see more than a few feet ahead. But I didn't care, I just needed to get away. The growls followed me, echoing off the trees, bouncing around in the dark, until it felt like the sound was coming from everywhere. I stumbled, nearly falling, but caught myself and kept moving. The adrenaline coursing through my veins was the only thing keeping me going. Every instinct told me to keep running, but my body was tiring fast. I had no idea where I was going or how far I had come. That's when I saw it a cabin, hidden in the shadows of the trees. It looked abandoned, old and forgotten, but it was shelter. I sprinted toward it, my heart pounding harder with each step. I reached the cabin and threw myself against the door, fumbling with the latch until it finally gave way. I slammed it shut behind me, leaning against it as my chest heaved from exhaustion. Inside, the cabin was dark, musty, and filled with an eerie silence. I felt for a light switch, but there was none. I grabbed a flashlight hanging by the door, flicking it on as I swept the beam across the room. The walls were covered in strange, ancient symbols, etched into the wood in jagged, deliberate strokes. I didn't know what they meant, but they felt old, 
like whoever had lived here knew something I didn't. The creature slammed against the door, the force of it rattling the entire cabin. My heart jumped into my throat. I couldn't run anymore. The door wouldn't hold for long. I had to do something. My eyes scanned the room in desperation, landing on an old, weathered book lying on a table near the corner. The pages were yellowed and brittle, but the symbols inside matched the ones on the walls. I flipped through the pages, my hands shaking. It was some kind of ritual, a way to banish the creature. My mind raced. It was a long shot, but it was the only shot I had. I grabbed the candles scattered around the room and began lighting them, arranging them in a circle on the floor, just like the instructions said. The creature slammed against the door again, harder this time. The walls shook, dust falling from the ceiling, but I ignored it, focusing on the words in the book. I knelt in the circle of candles, my heart pounding as I began chanting the strange, foreign words. The air in the cabin grew thick, almost electric, as the ritual began to take effect. I could feel the energy shifting, the symbols on the walls starting to glow faintly, pulsing with a strange light. The creature outside growled, louder than before, furious. It slammed into the door again, splintering the wood. I kept chanting, my voice rising in desperation as the walls began to crack under the pressure. The door exploded inward, and the creature stepped inside, its glowing eyes fixed on me. It was larger now, more monstrous, its form shifting in the flickering light, but I couldn't stop chanting. The cabin trembled, objects flying off the shelves, the walls groaning under the weight of the energy swirling around me. The creature lunged, moving impossibly fast, its shadow looming over me. In a final surge of adrenaline, I shouted the last words of the ritual. Time seemed to freeze. The air crackled with electricity as the creature reached for me, its clawed hand inches from my face. And then light. A blinding flash filled the cabin, so bright it felt like the world itself had been torn apart. The creature let out a deafening roar, its form flickering wildly before vanishing into the light. Silence. The air was still, the cabin quiet once again. My chest heaved, my heart pounding in my ears. I was drenched in sweat, every muscle in my body trembling from the rush of adrenaline. The candles flickered out, one by one, leaving me in darkness. I sat there for what felt like hours, too stunned to move, my mind trying to process what had just happened. The creature was gone, but I wasn't convinced it was over. As the adrenaline faded, a gnawing doubt crept in. The demon was banished, but for how long? Was it truly gone, or had it just been driven back into the shadows waiting? I forced myself to stand, my legs shaky, my mind racing. I had survived, but the fear lingered. The symbols on the walls had stopped glowing, but they still seemed to pulse with a strange energy. I left the cabin, walking into the early light of dawn, the forest was still, the oppressive darkness that had chased me gone. But I knew better. Something out there had hunted me, and it wasn't finished. I drove away from that place, my body aching and my mind spinning, but I couldn't shake the feeling that it was still watching, waiting. Somewhere in the shadows, it was waiting for its next chance. And now, every time I drive at night, I can feel it again, the low growl, the oppressive silence. It's out there somewhere, still hunting. I know it will come for me again. When it does, I'll be ready.